Let's discuss about conductors. A conductor is a material that easily conducts electrical current. Most metals are good conductors. The best conductors are single element materials such as copper, silver, gold and aluminium which are characterized by atoms with only one valence electron and very loosely bound to the atom. These lo loosely bound valence electrons can become free electrons with the addition of a small amount of energy to free them from the atom. Therefore, in a conductive material, the free electrons are available to carry the current. Let's discuss about semiconductors. A semiconductor is a material that is between conductors and insulators in its ability to conduct electrical current. A semiconductor in its pure state which is intrinsic state is neither a good conductor nor a good insulator. Single element semiconductors are antimony, arsenic, astatine, boron, polonium, tellurium, silicon and germanium. Compound semiconductors such as gallium arsenide, indium phosphide, gallium nitride, silicon carbide and silicon germanium are also commonly used. The single element semiconductors are characterized by atoms with four valence electrons. Silicon is the most commonly used semiconductor. Let's look into band gap. In solid materials, Interactions between the atoms smear the valence shell into a band of energy levels called as the valence band. The valence electrons are confined to that band. When an electron acquires enough additional energy, it can leave the valence shell and become a free electron and it will exist in what is known as the conduction band. The difference in energy between the valence band and the conduction band is called as the energy gap or the band gap. This is the amount of energy that a valence electron must have in order to jump from the valence band to the conduction band. Once in the conduction band, the electron is free to move throughout the material and is not tied to any given atom. If you can see in the figure, it is the energy diagrams for insulators semiconductors and the conductors. The energy gap or the band gap is the difference between the two energy levels and electrons are not allowed in this energy gap based on the quantum theory. Although an electron may not exist in this region, it can jump across it under certain conditions. For insulators, the gap can be crossed only when Breakdown conditions occur as when a very high voltage is applied across the material. In semiconductors, the band gap is smaller, allowing an electron in the valence band to jump into the conduction band if it observes a photon. The band gap depends on the semiconductor material. In conductors, the conduction band and the valence band overlaps, so there is no gap which we can see in the figure. This means that electrons in the valence band move freely in the conduction band, so there are always electrons available as free electrons. So comparison of a semiconductor atom to a conductor atom. Silicon is a semiconductor and copper is a conductor. Bohr diagrams of the silicon atom and the copper atom can be seen. Notice that the core of the silicon atom has a net charge of plus 4, which means 14 protons and 10 electrons. And the core of the copper atom has a net charge of plus 1, 29 protons and 28 electrons. Recall that the core includes everything except the valence electrons. The valence electrons in the copper atom feels an attractive force of plus 1 compared to a valence electron in the silicon atom which feels an attractive force of plus 4. Therefore, there is more force trying to hold a valence electron to the atom in a silicon than in a copper. The copper's valence electron is in the fourth shell. 
which is greater distance from its nucleus than the silicon's valence electron in the third shell. Recall that electrons farthest from the nucleus have the most energy. The valence electron in the copper has more energy than the valence electron in the silicon. This means that it is easier for valence electrons in copper to acquire additional energy to escape from their atoms and become free electrons that is in silicon. In fact, large number of valence electrons in copper already have sufficient energy to be free electrons at normal room temperature.